Hello, welcome to What's Going On. What's Going On uh, today is looking at uh, the demise of uh, two uh, world figures uh, uh, these past days, uh, Gorbachev first, and then the Queen of uh, England. What does it mean for the world today? And then and retrospectively, uh, you know, to uh, the past history, I mean, the past uh, 50 years, uh, we're going to talk about it with uh, Sandy Bird and K uh, Kurt Mehta. Uh, friends, first of all, the two figures going, like, what does it mean, like, mm -hmm. if, we, I, if we can intersect these two, uh, you know, death? Right, well, Kurt is the uh, person that I would ask what is the meaning, even, or the significance of the death of so, so Gorbachev in, Ru mm. in Russia. By the way, he died peacefully in Russia. Yes, he did. He, yes, he uh, did. was disfavored in Russia. He was partly mostly. a persona non grata. Persona uh, non grata, but nobody uh, assassinated him. Not yet, no. No, no, <laughs> not yet, no, in the end. Yeah, no, no, he died in no, his he bed. No, di he died of natural causes peacefully at uh, the age of 91. Uh, Mr. Gorbachev was born prior to the Second World War, 1931 and died in 2022 in um, early September, or were we the last week of August. So why are we talking about him? Um, let me just say what I'm a little bit about why I think it's an important topic, because I think his uh, administration, if you want to put it that way, his leadership of the Soviet Union uh, led eventually to the demise of the Soviet Union and then the turn from the Soviet Union to Russia. Right? right? And that, I think, has great significance. Whether you regard it as a tragedy or not is a different story. I, I kind of, in some ways, think it at least is very significant for the future that Russia became Russia rather than the Soviet Union. But anyway, what's your take on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, Gorbachev uh, is potentially one of the largest figures in the latter part of the 20th century's history mm -hmm. in terms of the amount of change Mm. that his administration uh, exacted on the world. Uh, he, you, we can contrast Mr. Gorbachev from prior Soviet leaders. Mm. Yeah. It, was a, it was a new style of leadership. Uh, he was very engaging with the people. The prior Soviet leaders going back from, we have to understand what happened immediately right. before uh, Mr. Gorbachev came into, into power. Uh, Leonid Brezhnev, uh, mm -hmm. a towering figure in Soviet history had passed away in 1982. And then there was a succession of two leaders after him, a Konstantin uh, Chernenko and Yuri Andropov, who right. both died within very, uh, within a quick, quick period of time after Brezhnev's death. Mm -hmm. And then Gorbachev was, you know, the fourth Soviet leader in about three years that came in. And he was younger than many of right. the prior Soviet leaders. And co leaders. kind of colorful. Colorful. Mm -hmm. um, he was a musician, an amateur musician, and he was a lawyer. He was uh, very oh, educated. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was uh, educated at Moscow State University, and he did things. He was not as secretive as prior Soviet mm -hmm. leaders. He was very engaging. He would go out onto the streets of Moscow and just talk to people, um, impromptu, without any advance notice, and he, he as a result, he was very well liked. Uh, the interesting thing is, on our side, in the United States, uh, he was looked at very suspiciously initially. Uh, these actions where he would go out onto the streets, he did it in New York City also, uh, wow, but he I did it in that. Moscow mm -hmm. uh, all the time. Uh, they looked at that very suspiciously, uh, people, uh, my friends on the right in this country, because they thought you know, he was trying to lull and to attract the West into uh, you, <laughs> communism. Yeah, right. Into communism, right. really? Yeah. Communism and just being attracted to him yeah. uh, d and being disarmed mm. by his presence, where you know you had very uh, staid, uh, grim prior leaders in Colorless. the Soviet Union. Yeah. Yes, whether it's uh, Khrushchev or. Uh, well, well, Khrushchev was colorful. A little bit, yeah. Remember him with the shoe in the UN? If you call that colorful. I do. <laughs> I do call it colorful. Right. Yeah. right. But yeah. not, not approachable. Not, right. not approachable. Not approachable. And, yeah. Uh, you know, he also uh, elevated the status of women, not so much in Soviet society, because they were already relatively elevated right. compared to the West. 
but in terms of how his wife was presented mm -hmm. to the world, Raisa Gorbachev uh, was looked at as almost a co-partner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where, where right, prior, right. prior Soviet first ladies, that was not the term that they were used, right. were very, you know, they were recessed in the background. And I can't, for example, name any prior right. Soviet leaders' mm -hmm. spouses, yeah, yeah. but everyone knew Raisa Gorbachev in the 1980s. Right, right. including in the West. Including in the West, right, and including right. in the West. So uh, he talked about an openness, a new openness called Glasnost, mm -hmm. and he talked about- It was uh, a political openness, That was a right? political opening, contrasted with a economic restructuring- Perestroika. Called perestroika, mm -hmm. perestroika. He wanted to maintain socialism in, in the Soviet Union. Uh, his version of socialism that he, that he espoused was probably closer to what some of the countries in Northern Europe yes, have. Right, it's yeah. a, a more right, of a democratic right. socialism. Uh, he wasn't an ideologue in, in, in a Marxist-Leninist uh, uh, tradition. Uh, but he, he was not interested in capitalism either, which is what many people later in the West thought he was interested in. There were people to the left of him, a Boris right. Yeltsin, oh, yeah. who wanted quicker reforms. Boris Yeltsin did? Yes, much more oh. so. He, he thought uh, Gorbachev was slow. So, I mean, you know, it's important to, to remember that he wanted to preserve the socialist system, but even within communism, he thought it was a reformable uh, ideology, mm -hmm. uh, that there were some, you know, changes that they had to make. Uh, the Soviet Union was also becoming an extended empire outside of the confines of even the Soviet Union itself, going into Africa, going into right. Asia. There was a protracted war in Afghanistan that had started in 1979. Right. 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 And the Soviets were losing lots of people mm -hmm. and a lot of money in that war, even though Afghanistan's proximity was, you know, they, it, was, it was essentially almost practically a bordering country to the southern Soviet republics. And Gorbachev wanted to disengage from uh, any extended involvement in areas that went outside of Eastern Europe and outside of the Soviet Union itself, including, including their involvement in Cuba, including right. their uh, involvement in other places in South America. His uh, thinking was that, the, that too much money was being spent outside of the Soviet Union and that this was not sustainable. Uh, economically speaking, but how, how free was he to uh, maneuver? Uh, you know, is the way is you know any any uh, opposition from uh, from his polit. I mean, from the Politburo and. Uh, well, I mean, certainly there was. He, he had he had a, he had a good deal of opposition. I, I mean, there were you know there was the prior generation of leadership, Eric, that was not interested in a significant change mm -hmm. uh, in Cold War politics as well as what was known at the time as the Brezhnev Doctrine mm -hmm. uh, when it came to opposing the United States if there was any kind of movement on the part of the United States anywhere in the developing world. And of course, anything, any kind of movement towards pushing into Eastern Europe. Yeah. And Gorbachev wanted to, you know, he, was, he had a plan. He had met with Reagan a few times and there was a talk about, you know, uh, uh, reducing the number of nuclear arms in the world. Mm -hmm. I thought they came very close to signing something, him and Reagan. They they came very close. They had a they had a summit in Reykjavik, Iceland, right, in 1986. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at the summit, you know, they I still remember the pictures. They met in this little red house, mm -hmm. you know, uh, one one room house, and uh, and spent a few days there talking about how they wanted to actually uh, get rid of all nuclear weapons. Exactly, that right. was actually on the table, but right. nothing was signed, Sandy, right. because. Uh, the United States had just, under President Reagan, had just started uh, uh, the SDI program, which was known as Star Wars, well, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 taking uh, weapons into into space and use the, and using satellites. Uh, at that time, it was a big initiative, extremely extremely costly, uh, and the Soviets knew that also that it was going to be costly for the United States, but it was also going to be costly for the Soviet Union to respond in kind, and. That was a sticking point at that Reykjavik con uh, conference. Uh, Reagan would not agree to dropping the SDI, the uh -huh. Star Wars program, and G Gorbachev required that was a condition precedent. Well, before, it seems that uh, might have been reasonable, right? Yeah. right? But, but Gorbachev also was perceived as very pro uh, West. W West uh, at some point, some people maybe thought that the West influenced his position. How, how was that? You know? 
it, it depends on who you ask, Eric, and it depends on how he was, you know, per, how the media portrayed him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I spent a little bit of time in Western Europe at the time, and uh, specifically in, in, in West Germany. And in West Germany, I thought you also spent some time in the East. In both, in yeah, both. Right. But in, in terms of how he was perceived in West Germany, mm -hmm. he, I mean, the man was adored. He was loved. Reagan was not as popular mm, amongst a good portion of the population in Western Europe, it, you know, maybe with the exception of Britain. Mm. You know, he was very close with uh, Prime Minister Thatcher. But uh, Reagan, Reagan, was. Reagan, Reagan, Reagan yeah. was very, yeah, they had a very right, good right, relationship. Right, right. But, um, you know, people on the street, the average West German, the average French person, Thought very highly of, of uh, oh, Joe, Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, so was did Americans he was adored. in general. Uh, I, I, I think Americans were a little more wary. It depended on you know how you uh, classified yourself. If you were on the right, you were very suspicious that you know he was laying a trap uh -huh. for 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 the United States. And more conservative politicians said we really need to be careful, mm -hmm. not change course in the United States. Which is to what? Well, the course at that time was Cold well, War well, politics, right? Right, which was to try to, you know, basically agree to some of his proposals, right. Gorbachev's proposals, to disarm, to reduce the number right. of nuclear weapons. I mean, one of the biggest uh, accomplishments of, of uh, President Reagan and Gorbachev working together was reducing the, uh, the number of long-range nuclear missiles. Mm. Right. Uh, as well as intermediate forces, the INF Treaty, which was just recently uh, junked, right? junked mm -hmm. by by the last administration here by President Trump, and mm -hmm. then you know uh, Putin responded in kind. But uh, but that's always to me how it happens. The United States is to me always the more recalcitrant power to make a deal with Russia. Right, but I'm they sure. were but they were actually. Engaged. Yeah. When no, no, I, and I think was Trump there. was too, to some extent. Except that, the, yeah, the, we retreated from the treaty. Right, we exactly. breached um, the treaty, uh, the INF treaty, which was a big accomplishment of the. Okay, so eventually, so what you're saying is that Gorbachev, I think you're saying, is uh, was a reformer and believed the Soviet Union should be changed in kind of a, but within the system itself, within the system to keep itself. the communist or socialist system but allow for enough changes so that it could become more or less democratic, right. more democratic, more democratic, and more uh, freer in the economy, but yeah. not a capitalist in a, economy. In a, in a Norwegian, right. Swedish right. way. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. not, not so, necessarily in an American or West German way or British way, but in a, in a Northern European Okay, so what happened sense. to this guy? Okay, so, I mean, so he had uh, a great deal of difficulty towards the latter part of his administration uh, the, the biggest thing was it was, it was internal. Mm. Uh, when uh, Eastern Europe began to, to fall apart, fall apart mm -hmm. uh, the Soviet Union, what, what's really important is uh, what prefaced that act, the disintegration of Eastern Europe uh, and the Warsaw Pact, I should say, right. that's, that's probably a little more right. accurate. Uh, Gorbachev actually visited Deng Xiaoping in China uh, immediately prior to the uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, that's what we call it in this country, the Tiananmen S Square massacre. Right. The reason for the events at Tiananmen Square was to welcome the Soviet premier. That's why they had a gathering there. Mm -hmm. It's important to know. So Gorbachev actually went to China, to Beijing, and went to Tiananmen Square and met with Deng Xiaoping, and they had you know grand speeches and everything. And it was after Gorbachev left that the Chinese sent tanks in right. to quash the uh, the protesters and the, uh, the people striking. Year? That was like 86? That was 89. 89, okay. Yeah, and Gorbachev, was, Gorbachev mm -hmm. did not condemn the Tiananmen Square actions on the part of the Chinese government. That's really important to know. However, what he learned from that was that for himself, he was not going to use force in the event there were Eastern European countries who wanted to he leave would the not Warsaw use force. He would not. Okay. So mm -hmm. when the Hungarians and the Austrians opened up their border, allowing a free uh -huh. flow right, right, right. from Eastern Europe into Austria and then into Germany, uh, there was no there were no Soviet tanks that went in to enforce and uh, and uh, uh, secure that border between East and West. 
Did you have something? Yeah, yeah. I think Gorbachev even said it in an interview before he passed away that you know he did that because he didn't want to risk any life. It could have been it could have backlash more than that. But at the end, you know, the legacy, his legacy is like uh, mi fig mi raisin, as we say in French. You know, some will say that he is the one who uh, you know precipitated the the fall of uh, the right. Russian. Because because the biggest thing, Eric, was he there wasn't a use of force, mm. except. Mm. You know, uh, so, I mean, a lot of people look at the end of the traditional Cold War mm -hmm. the, on November 9th, 89, 1989, when the Berlin Wall right, was, breached, yeah. was right. breached. Right. Was breached. And, and then when the reunification of Germany was being placed on the table mm -hmm. as a discussion point where both the Eastern, East and West mm -hmm. were, were consenting to that. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, the French and the British were not as excited not? about yeah. Germany not? reuniting. Oh, I, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. The country was going to be... Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I get it. Historically, yeah. and, well, it was historical and economic. I mean, they were very concerned that, the, that Germany, once again, was going to become the, the most dominant power in, Guess in what? Europe. Which it, what? Which, which it became. Which is true. Which it yeah. became. Yeah. Which it ultimately became. Okay, but wait a minute. I want to um, explain a little bit. So, at this period of time, Germany was divided because of World War II. That is correct, okay. yeah. So, East Germany was communist mm -hmm. and under some kind of a, I don't know if you'd call it leadership, not really an occupation, though, either by the Russians, but it was a communist country it, yeah it was as occupied honestly as west as germany West-Germany. you know when 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 i was there in the 80s uh i was there the, also by the way yeah there yeah. were and you remember there were lots of american troops mm -hmm. in, in, the, in, in west, west germany still in are. west berlin yeah, still and are. still are and there were a lot of soviet troops right. in east berlin and in eastern germany and that eastern. had been a result of the end of world war ii That's i don't correct. think i don't think most people in this country understand that the reason Germany was divided was that the Soviets basically came into Berlin, liberated that part of Germany right. from the Nazis, right. and we, the Americans, were in the West. Yeah, right? yeah. The right. two, the two sides, right. allies at that allies time. Allies yeah. at the time. Right. Yes. Uh, the 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 Soviets came from the East. Right. The United States and, shook hands. and French and yeah yeah in Torgau Germany they shook hands and had a big party. Right. Of course. Uh, so we but, need to also talk about, you know, another, you know. Well, wait a minute. Uh, so, <laughs> but how, so how did then the demise of the Soviet Union happen after that? Uh, the, demise of the, so the demise of the Soviet Union itself was uh, Lithuania was one of the first uh, Soviet republics that announced its independence. Mr. Gorbachev was not interested in that. Uh, he was okay with the, the East Germany going, okay with the Warsaw Pact disintegrating, but he sent tanks into... Uh, East East Berlin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, East into into Lithuania. into Lithuania, and there were there was a loss of life there. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent troops into um, Armenia, and there was loss of life there too. And Armenia uh, declared its independence. Uh, what happened afterwards is that there was a lot of soul searching within the Soviet Union. Uh, there were hardliners who were not interested in the republics breaking apart. Mr. Gorbachev talked about creating a new Soviet Union right. and, and talked about a new constitution where all of these different republics would work together and stay together. There was a referendum done in Ukraine. Mr. Gorbachev thought that Ukraine would stay with the Soviets. 90% mm -hmm. uh, of Ukrainians decided to vote uh, uh, for secession mm -hmm. from, from the Soviets. And after that referendum, that was a pivotal part and played a pivotal part in Mr. Gorbachev's decision on how to govern forward, and that was basically a disintegration. Okay. Yeah, there was so, a coup. I mean, there was a hardline coup right. for a short period of time. Right. And then the West got way, very involved in basically financing Boris Yeltsin. Correct. And ultimately, that led to the breakup of the Soviet Union. Which, and mis which Mr. Gorbachev was not happy about, right. and he didn't think that the West was going to go as far as trying to relegate the Soviet, the, the former Soviet Union, now the con Commonwealth of Independent States, into a backwater. And, and that's what they did. And ultimately, that's what he, he was very uh, unhappy about. Right. And he, also, that led, I think, directly to the kind of the election, eventually, of Vladimir Putin. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's 
and turning to the, and that's what we have today is Vladimir Putin, right, who is continuing to lead Russia as Russia. Is yes, right. Yes. It's interesting about Vladimir Putin how Gorbachev put it this way. You know, uh, sometimes nations are faced with challenges that requires the leadership to to stay there because mm -hmm. you know there's nobody capable of taking over and that's where Putin is right now you know because the country is at uh, you know uh, a very important crossroad and then there's no other leader because he was asked somehow if he condemns you know uh, right. uh, 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 Putin being there forever so that's what what he yeah. said and Gorbachev was a big supporter of Putin initially mm -hmm. he was for the uh, Russian involvement in um, in uh, uh, South Ossetia uh -huh. and in Georgia uh -huh. when right. there was an action, right. I think it was in 2008 or I six. But I remember that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Gorbachev was in favor of uh, Russia taking action. He was in favor of uh, Russia taking Crimea also. Yeah. He, w he went on record yes. stating yeah. that. Well, Crimea had always been part of Russia. Right, but so Gorbachev did not condemn Putin yeah. in either of those right. actions. Uh, he did not go on record. It wasn't known what his point point of view was with respect to this recent uh, uh, incursion into into Ukraine, right. into Ukraine po proper. But I but I really want to look in a way, and then we'll turn to your subject um, to say that Vladimir. I don't understand why Americans don't get that Vladimir Putin is a Russian and he's going to defend Russian interests. Period. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the reasons that this war has broken out in the Ukraine. Yeah. But anyway, so turning to the demise yeah, the, of, uh, of King, the Queen, the queen uh, Elizabeth II. Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's very different. Yeah, I, I do mean, too. I you do know, too. The, uh, the United Kingdom yeah, was, uh, you know, I think Queen Elizabeth came to the throne in the early 1950s. Is that when? Yeah. Uh, much of the United Kingdom had already disintegrated, mm -hmm. with the exception of many of its holdings in Africa, uh, which did not uh, did not gain their independence until the early 1960s. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but but they lost a lot of their they uh, they lost a lot of their their uh, income from co colonies yeah. and even before right. Elizabeth left. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, before Elizabeth came right, and, exactly. and partly because of the damage done by, by the Germans during the Second World War. Right, they and the First World War. And the First World War, but their, right, their resources right, were really right. stretched. And also because of the takeover by the yeah. American Empire yeah. of the former British Empire in right. a lot of ways. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, you know, uh, sure, she was the regent, she was, she was the queen. However, you know, the British government was intimately involved for the prior century in their holdings in Africa and Asia. You know, uh, the Queen didn't really have a whole lot to do with, you know, governing foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, I would. As much as the Prime Minister yeah. of okay, Britain. Do you have. No, it was me. Huh? No, no, go ahead. The that's reason, my point of view. Okay, that's, I have a different point of view. Did anybody, and this is a, a podcast by Chris Hedges yesterday, which is a really funny as, in some ways. But um, I, I do believe that the Queen had a great deal of power and influence as the symbol of a large British empire and a symbol also of class privilege, that the British monarchy is not powerless and not without influence, and it stands for very conservative values all over the world. And so her demise um, kind of reminded me that, uh, that as an empire, she is sort of, she was, she really was a status quo person and put forth the idea, anyway, of a great British empire, even though it's in demise. Right. But and part of it was personal because yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the British monarchy wanted to preserve itself within Britain mm -hmm. because a lot of young Britons that were interviewed this week after the king, the queen passed away was that the, that the monarchy was irrelevant. It's and not irrelevant, is the right, point. Right, yeah, right, right. But self-preservation, you know, I mean, the monarchy during the 20th century did a couple of things for self-preservation. You know, one is to yeah, create this uh, tourism mm -hmm. thing that they have, you know, in London. The second thing was the monarchy was German yes, in origin. Yes, originally, originally, And they, yes, you know, yes. the, the, the term, the Mountbatten family, mm -hmm. the, the original family was Battenberg, which was not a palatable name mm -hmm. during World War One and World War Two. During, during World War One, yeah. So they right. recreated right. themselves, exactly. you know, exactly. deftly 
and were somehow able to maintain their privileged privilege position right, right. of being this British, uh, you know, mainstay. Uh, when, you know, if you went back a few generations, you know, four or five generations, uh, they didn't even speak English. I know, the they, they didn't spoke speak, German. Right, and guess what their name yeah. was, I believe, Hanover. I think. They came out of Hanover, yeah, right. but the family was Battenberg, and yeah, there were a couple of different German German names. So they, they kind of very, in a crafty way, made themselves more British as the 20th and century went on. And ruled over a huge, big empire. Yeah, I, I would say that the prime minister ruled over uh, the empire. But I don't say that. Yeah. She, is, she was and a the, symbol. No, I, dis so, I disagree, yeah. not vehemently. So yeah. but, two ahead. big figures, one lost completely the uh, the empire right. and another one managed to uh, keep she hung on to it <laughs> yeah yeah and they still have some colonies there's still gonna, islands I'm that they own i'm going to end by <laughs> this i think and this is i couldn't believe the adulation of the monarch in this country i want to remind yeah. our le our people that we are a revolutionary republic we fought against these people right. and we kicked them out in 1776 and I, so I do not, and became a republic. <laughs> Maybe it's a sin. I mean, the Stockholm uh, well, I mean, syndrome. You know, yeah, the right. kind right. of like you know our Stockholm <laughs> syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, the closest thing we have are the uh, Kardashians. So yeah. you know, we don't have our own royalty. Yeah. But we, uh. but we, <laughs> but we instituted a republic. We could have kept the monarchy, and we didn't. We became a republic where all people are considered equal. Yeah. Correct. All right. This is the demise of this yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> C'est la fin. Yes. This is, you know, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, folks, uh, this is it for today. That was what's going on. And we'll be back in a month, I hope, if we're all still here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>